Hey everybody, Phil Killian with Killian Beef here. It's been a long time. It's been a long time since we've uh, put anything out there to let you all know what's going on with us. Um, exactly a year ago, we put out a video um, explaining why we were closing our beef shop down over there in Mesa. And I'll put a link to that video in the description here, so if you missed that or want the full story, you can, you can watch that. Um, I can give you the basic cliff notes of that here real quick to make make all this make sense. But the bottom line is I raise my cattle here on this ranch, which is out between Safford and Duncan, Arizona. And I raise and wean my calves here and I ship those. I would normally ship those calves from here up to Mesa where we had a little feeding operation and we'd have our retail store there. And uh, what happened was, is my, my family decided to sell that property in Mesa and that sale finally went through. I think they'll be tearing all that down here shortly. Which, like I said in that past video, is sad. I'm not real happy about it, but it is what it is. You know, it's not, not something in my control or, and I'm not going to get all bent out of shape over it either. Um... But basically, where that leaves us is we're still raising cattle. We're still out here on the ranch every day raising cattle. We just don't have our feeding set up or our retail store anymore. And I had mentioned in that video what we would need to do to, to, to keep the ball rolling. And basically, finding a place to sell beef that's easy we, we there's lots of places available that we could do that at, at not too terrible of a cost but replicating that special feeding operation we had in mesa out here has been a challenge and uh, again watch that video if you want more details of why it's not just a traditional old feedlot it's very it's a very different setup than than what you would normally see cattle being fed at, and that really contributed to the quality of our product. So for me to go to retail selling beef again, I've got to have that exactly the way we had it so that we could have the same consistent product. It, it's, it's what makes Killian Beef Killian Beef. So the reasons, there's three main reasons why I have not gotten that uh, setup done out here. Number one is cost of materials with inflation, everything's just sky high. It's, it would, the costs are a little unreasonable to get that set up. That's been a deterring factor. Number two is our headquarters here sits, actually is not on private land, it's on Arizona state land that we pay a, a lease on and the reason why that is is years and years ago probably even before Arizona was a state they built this headquarters here and it just it was here um, so we've got our corrals my house is here on this piece that our headquarters and the and the corrals where we work and process the cattle when we're weaning and shipping and all that is here and for me to add that feedlot set up we would have to place an application through the state land department and jump through bureaucratic hoops to get that done and it's it's doable it's possible but there's some things going on within the state land department that complicate things just right now and i won't get into that that's a whole nother topic and discussion but suffice it to say we would need to build that setup on other private land that we have out here on the ranch that's mixed in with the state land but then you look at issues of electricity water all that that adds a humongous cost to the to the bottom line of getting that that setup built um i've had people reach out to me that have like closed down old feedlots in the valley and things but again it just wouldn't work the way that we had it set up before it wouldn't be killing and beef so that's been a deterring factor in preventing us from getting the ball rolling again uh, number three is as many of you know in our on our story on our website and i've mentioned it in vid videos past that uh, the cattle ranching business is not a super profitable business 
And uh, there's an old saying that says, if you're in the cow business to make money, you ought to have your head examined. And I 100% agree with that. And I'm not in it to make money. I'm in it because I love to, I just, I love raising cattle and horses and all that. But so I bought the ranch from my family in 2020. And I had mentioned that without selling beef, it would be very, very tough for me to make my, my payments every year. But what has changed is, We've been very, very fortunate that the last two years in a row, we've had incredible monsoon seasons and just grown tons and tons of grass. The cattle are all fat and happy, and we haven't had to pour a bunch of input costs into them to maintain them with like supplemental feed and mineral and things like that. They've just been doing very, very well. So that's been a huge blessing. Also, the current cattle market situation is that the cattle market is very high. Calves are selling for a lot of money. And because of those lower costs and the higher values of cattle, we're dang near um, netting what we would on those cattle had we put them through the feed and sold them as beef. Now, that's not going to be the same every year, obviously. The cattle market's bound to go down again and I don't know that the cost of anything will ever go down again. So I can't just say that this is the way it's going to be from here on out and we'll be just fine. So, But for right now, we've been able to make it. We're doing very well. Uh, as I mentioned, we raise horses also. The horse market's been, been really good also. So we're doing very well with that and kind of making up for what we're missing out on beef sales through that. On that same kind of note, I've had a few people reach out to me and say, well, you're probably not selling beef because you're getting a, a chunk of money out of that property selling in Mesa. Well, I'll be uh, upfront and open and honest about that. I think that I probably will get some sort of money out, out of that. But as I understand, it'd probably be about enough to get me in a new pickup or something. And I'd be really grateful for that. And that, that would be awesome. But it's not going to be enough to put my feet up and sitting on a chair in Tahiti for the rest of my life. That's for dang sure. So, yeah, that's not really a factor in all this at all. So where does that leave us now? Well... One other factor to all this is, I'll, uh, I'll put it this way, I really miss my interaction with you guys. I've seen you every weekend. I had regular customers come in every week, and we were on real, real good familial terms. I'd hear about your family. I'd tell you about mine. I'd, you guys would want to know what's going on the ranch. You guys would share me your pictures and what you'd done with my beef, and some of you guys are just wizards with a grill and a smoker and seeing some of that stuff you do at those dino ribs or our briskets or our steaks or whatever is just incredible. It, uh, I mean, we got to where I didn't hardly have to do any marketing. You guys would do it all for me and share those pictures, and I really appreciate that. You guys really helped us get the word out and, and, and get a lot of beef sold. And I guess where I'm going with this is I dang sure miss seeing you guys and having that interaction and people telling you thank you. I really appreciate your product. I mean, that's just, it uh, really gives you a sense of accomplishment of working your butt off all year to raise cattle and then have someone actually, you know, uh, appreciate your product, I guess. And I really miss that. However, I do not miss making that trip into the valley every week. I'll just be honest with you. Uh, that was really tough on me and my family um, of having to just pack up every Thursday afternoon, go pick up that beef in Tucson, drive up to Mesa, unload about, I think we were doing like 3,000 or 3,500 pounds of beef a week. That took its toll on my back. <laughs> I've got a couple of back issues now, but... Uh, it was dang sure worth it though you know it put us in the financial spot to where we could buy the ranch from the family and i'm grateful for that and i'm grateful for you guys but that was just it was a tough deal to to go in every week to do that and then get back home to the ranch and catch back up with things and 
it was really rough and I don't miss and and the traffic over there has gotten nuts it's that part of town used to be just kind of real quiet and not a lot of traffic but here lately I've gone up there to see my mom and dad or or go get a few things from the feedlot before they they tear it down it's just congested now and just it puts me in a bad mood to be in that traffic and or maybe it's just I've been out here on the ranch where there's nobody our nearest neighbor lives about 24 miles away or something and maybe I'm just turning into a cranky old hermit I don't know but anyway uh, where does that put us going forward so basically I won't say that we're permanently closing the door on retail selling beef uh, in the future, but for the, for our in the near future, our plans are to just focus on raising cattle and selling to other ranchers, uh, selling possibly selling steers to people that will will grow them out and sell them as beef. It won't be Killian beef, but they'll be Killian beef cattle. Um, and possibly when we can iron out the the wrinkles and details on how to get our feeding operations set up out here that's just going to take time and money once we get that going you know our 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 general thinking is that we will probably try to do some sort of branded beef deal with a different distributor of some kind and we would dang sure let people know where they could get killian beef and they would see the label on it um but like i said for for the immediate future we're just planning on raising and selling cattle uh one thing is i've had people a lot of people ask well can we just buy a cow from you or buy a steer from you and and the reason why the answer is no for that right now is that i just sell my calves in in large groups for me to get the right price for them right now and uh, again i don't have my feed lot my feeding operation set up the way that I had it there in Mesa so I could feed cattle out here but it just wouldn't be the same the same end result as I had said before so that's the reason why I don't have finished weight cattle to sell I just I've just been selling younger calves that are six to eight eight, eight months of age and I and I tend to sell those in larger lots rather than just one or two at a time or something like that so anyway uh we got rid of our facebook last summer i i had got covid and was real groggy and tired and got trying to answer messages and things and just got kind of done with it we kept instagram and i i guess we will continue to just share the ranch life and what's going on out here on the ranch and keep people up to date and that kind of thing and you can follow along with us if you if you care to see what's going on out here and if not I totally understand we're not selling beef so but uh, anyway we'll try to keep everyone up to date on Instagram and YouTube on what's going on and we may try to make some more like what's going on on the ranch type of videos and things like that so it's just Killian Beef on YouTube and Killian Beef on Instagram and I guess I'll close that out and uh, just again express my appreciation and gratitude to you guys for for buying our beef and and helping us achieve our goals and just changes come along and we have to roll with them and if if we ever get back to where we sell beef we'll dang sure let everyone know and again many thanks and uh We'll be in touch. Just follow us along on social media. Thank you.